Steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, praise team. Amen. There's a spirit in this house. And it's the spirit of the Lord. And it's a sweet spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got Glory to God. My Lord. Mm. We could just go home. Hallelujah. Spirit has been high in this place today. Y'all came to have church today. Amen. It's something about being with one accord. That's when the spirit falls. Yeah. That's when he send us a word. This is the atmosphere that healing takes place in. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I just, I know I got to get through this message. I know I got to get through it. Hallelujah. God. It's calling us up higher. He's calling us higher. No longer just church. But I hear him say, come up hither. I show you great and mighty things you know not of. He's calling us higher. My God, we got to raise the standard a little higher. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all hot? Praise be unto God. Where the heat at on? Hallelujah. Praise God. Whew. Why don't you turn in your Bibles to the book of Jonah? First chapter while we're waiting. Amen. I am excited. About what God is doing, what God is saying to the body of Christ in this hour, in the season that we're in. We're in the season of waiting on God. Amen. Uh, the, the slaves call this the lay-by season, lay-by time. That's when they couldn't plant crops. Amen. They couldn't plow. All they did was work on the tools, make certain they were ready when it was time to sow. Time to plow and time to sow. They, will, they call it lay-by time. It was easy time for them. Amen. But after the, the crops came in and, and, and uh, it was going to be hard times, it, they, they call it, they got up from can't see, they, they left the field at can't see. Can't see the can't see, they call it. Amen. Worked all day. But God is calling us higher. Right now, we're in the lay-by times. Yeah, but it's not going to be no hard labor from can't see to can't see. It's from glory to glory. Faith to faith. From one blessing to another blessing. That's what God is calling us. But we need to deal with Jonah today. So we do honor our father. We honor the son. 
and we honor the Holy Spirit in this place this day. Amen. He's already done enough. Hallelujah. Thank God for my wife. Amen. <laughs> she didn't ask for much, didn't want much, but I had a special surprise for her. And she said, I ain't going to do nothing but put it back in. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, that's for you, and you're going to spend it on you. <laughs> it ain't for somebody to borrow none. <laughs> Amen. It ain't for bills. No, that's for you to spend on you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and she looked at me funny. She know I was serious. Praise God. So I thank God for her. Thank God for our spiritual leaders in the earth, Archbishop Harris Clark and elect Lady Betty Clark. We'll be with them this week. Hallelujah. And the other Synod members, praise God. We thank God for Elder Burke being here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're expecting great things. Amen. We thank God for the deacons, McCarroll and Ballinger. Thank God for you all. Thank God for Superintendent Brown, Soundtech Brown. Amen. My daughter, Media. Amen. And, and Prophetess. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Y'all got that here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm told her she got the spirit on her. <laughs> And, it, and she got to get it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless my soul. Thank God for all of you. Man, without you, there'll be no us. So we thank God for you being obedient to the voice of God this morning. We're going to talk about this morning obeying God. Amen. And uh, the example we're going to use is one that who failed to obey God. At first, amen. Then after obeying God, got mad. Amen. <laughs> but we call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves on our way to glory. <laughs> but we want to justify our prejudices. Amen. No, don't work that way. <laughs> as, as we deal with Jonah here a little bit, we'll find out. That, are you at Jonah 1? Amen. Uh, first of all, we're going to start at verse 1. King James Version says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amatai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse 3, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Somebody say, but God. Amen. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Take your seat, amen. Children may be dismissed. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's all right. You know, you know, little troubled waters. He's going to go where he want to go. <laughs> we thank God for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Obeying God. A lot of people think that they are obeying God and they have some issues in their life. We're going to see some issues in Jonah's life. Jonah was a prophet of God. Amen. That means he, he was pretty close to God. He, he listened for God's voice. He heard God's voice and he prophesied. Amen. He, he had a word that came from the Lord and it was an authentic word. Amen. Because it came from the voice of God. 
So in other words, when you hear something from God, you can uh, proclaim it on the mountaintop, on the rooftop. You can proclaim it in the streets because it came directly from God. Amen. So you can be assured that whatever God says, it's going to be. Amen. Amen. So Jonah had a word straight from the mouth of God. He commanded Jonah to travel to that great city of Nineveh. You know Nineveh. Nineveh was the city founded by Nimrod, you know, where they built that tower uh, trying to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And God had to come down and confound their language. That city, it was the second largest city in what is now uh, Assyria. Babylon being the first city, the great city, the greatest city. But it was a great city, as we're going to see later. There was probably 60,000 people in that city. That was a great city in that day. Amen. Praise be unto God. So it was well known in the ancient Near East, a great city. But there was some, 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 some sin, great sin in that city. The king called it the people are wicked. If the king called the people wicked that he's over, then they must be wicked. Uh, and God saw that the people were wicked. Amen. And, and, and Assyria was an enemy to Israel. So now Nineveh has come up before God, and God is getting ready to deal with Nineveh. Before God deals with anything, he always sends a man, a man, to go tell somebody about yourself. Amen. And what I'm getting ready to do if you don't straighten up. Okay? Praise God. So, so Jonah got this word from God, but Jonah knew God so well. Uh, that he decided that he's not going to Nineveh to cry against that city because he know that God would repent. Uh, and he wanted to see Nineveh destroyed <laughs> because they were enemies. Uh, see, see, that's why Jesus had to come along and say, pray for your enemies. <laughs> do good unto them that despitefully use you uh, but the, the prejudice that he had against uh, Assyria and Nineveh he decided that he was going to flee from the presence of God I'm not going to do what God told me to do and many of us don't do what God tell us to do Amen. Some of us, God has told you to be more faithful, but you're not. Amen. Some of you, God has told you to go bless somebody, but you didn't. Amen, somebody. Yeah, we're, we're guilty too. I'm not, I'm not condemning Jonah. I'm just using him as the example. The Bible says that these were put in the word of God as an example for us. What not to do and what to do. Amen. Jonah chose to be disobedient. Jonah chose to flee from, notice the word, the presence of God. He must didn't read David. Because David said, where can I go <laughs> to escape your presence? I can't go anywhere. If I go up to the, uh, the mountaintop, you're there. If I go to the the highest parts of heaven, you're there. If I go down to the depths of hell, you're there. If I go to the deepest part of the sea, you're there. Where can I go? And here Jonah is trying to escape the presence of God. Maybe God is not over in Tarshish. <laughs> Maybe God is not in the nightclub. So I go there and do my thing. Then I come in on Sunday and do my thing. <laughs> Maybe God ain't on your job where they don't know you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. When they hear you uh, joining in with the dirty jokes. Huh? Uh, I don't have to be Christian on the job. No, you got to be a Christian everywhere. In the marketplace, you got to be a Christian because God is everywhere at the same time. 
He paid money. Try to escape the presence of God. And, and, and you have to understand that uh, Tarsus is in present day Spain. So he went from Israel, was going to Israel, across the Mediterranean, all the way to Spain to try to escape the presence of God. Some people... Like the prodigal son decided that he needed to do his thing, so he going to go from the presence of his father. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he had to be brought low before he realized, I've sinned against God and I've sinned against my father. I think I'll go back home. So here, here Jonah is <laughs> on the ship. Uh, I'm safe now, and he's getting ready to set sail, and everything is smooth. That's how the devil do you. He entices you out, and then when you're out there so far, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, he wants to try to destroy you. Amen. Uh, you find yourself, when you're out in the middle of sin, doing things that you thought you'd never do. As a matter of fact, you told yourself, you'll never do that. You'll never do this. You know, I never take drugs. I never drink liquor. I never sleep around. I never do all these things. But boy, when the devil entices you out slowly, you find yourself doing the thing. I'm talking about what I'm talking about because I know what I'm talking about. Uh, did you get that? <laughs> this is not a hearsay. This is a no-so. Praise be unto God. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Jonah, he, he got into the ship and went down into the bottom of the ship and went to sleep. While he was sleeping, God showed up out in the midst of the sea and began to disturb the sea. Hallelujah. Oh, and the men were afraid for their life and they were calling on their gods. You call on your God, I call on my God. Perhaps one of the gods will hear us, whoever brought this storm upon us, and will deliver us. And they called on their gods. And God wasn't answering. Why wasn't they answering, Pastor? Because they had gods with no with eyes but couldn't see, ears and couldn't hear, mouth but couldn't talk, legs but couldn't walk. But they say, is there anybody else? You remember that passenger that went down to the bottom of the ship? Go get him. Who are you? <laughs> Where you going? They was asking questions to Jonah. He said, I'm a Hebrew. And my God is the God that created heaven and earth. My God is the God that created sea and land. You can read all that. Okay. Praise God. And they fear fell upon them because they knew the Israelites' God. See, these were Phoenicians. Uh you know, right off the coast, around near Israel, they know God when he was moving them in the midst of Israel. They knew how nobody could defeat Israel when God was in the midst of them. Amen. So fear fell upon them. And they said, well, what's, what's happening? Why are you, where are you going? What's, what's happening? And he began to tell them the narrative that, well, I'm trying to flee from the presence of God. And the reason why the sea is so tumultuous is because I'm disobeying. He didn't say disobeying, but I'm saying this. I'm disobeying God. He said, well, well, first of all, they cast lots and the lot fell on him. So they wanted to know. That's why they asked him all these questions. And so they said, well, what shall we do? If you throw me overboard, then the sea will be calm. These men had more compassion on Jonah than Jonah had for Nineveh. And you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> Are you hearing me? 
Yeah, no, they didn't want to throw him overboard. They didn't want to kill an innocent man. So they began to row even harder. And the more they rowed, the worse it got. See, when you're fighting against God, I like that saying, your arms are too short to fight with God. You can't box with God. Amen. You don't even know where he is. You don't, can't see him to hit him. But he sees you. Amen. So they roar and roar and roar and getting nowhere. Finally, they gave up and said, we got to do what the man told us to do. And they threw him overboard. And the sea was calm. Now the Bible declared that uh, when they threw him overboard, the sea was calm. The men feared, even, feared God even the more. They just saw a miracle. The God that controls the sea. Hallelujah. Now Jonah probably thought, commentaries really tell you this as well, that this is my way of escape. Throw me overboard, I'm going to die. I won't have to go to Nineveh. <laughs> when God has it for you to do something, you either do it the first time or you're going to do it the second time. The second time going to be worse on you. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Obeying God. But God had a plan. The Bible say <laughs> that when he threw him overboard, the sea got calm. The fish came along that God had prepared and swallowed him up. Listen, look at God. The Bible say God prepared this fish. See, biologists and botanists and all of them, not botanists, but the biologists tell you that a whale cannot swallow a man. But the Bible says God prepared a fish. A man, a big fish. A great fish, cause this is this this whole thing is about great. You know, everything God did was great, so He prepared a great fish to swallow him up and took him to the depths of the sea. <laughs> now understand that when anything eat you eat, there's something in your body called acids that begin to decompose or, 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 or digest the food. Amen. So they say, well, if he was in there three days, he probably was bleached white. The Bible say God prepared a fish. Amen. And it's from out of the belly of the fish after three days that Jonah looked up and cried out to God. <laughs> How long is it going to take for you before you look up and cry out to God? Amen. God is calling all of us to obedience. Amen. So, so we, we, we got to this point now that as he called out, he says from hell, in the belly of this whale, whew, hallelujah, and cried out to a God who he know has mercy. But he didn't want mercy for Nineveh. But oh Lord, have mercy on me. Hey, the Bible declares unto us, if any man want mercy, let him have some mercy. You got to have mercy on folk who you don't like. Mercy on folk that hate you. Come on. Have mercy. That you may obtain mercy from God huh? and find favor in the eyes of God. <laughs> so he wasn't compassionate for Nineveh. He just wanted them to be destroyed, wiped off the face of the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. So then, we, 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 as we continue this story, the Bible says that the whale obeyed God and vomited him up on the shore. <laughs> Understand this, that from... Israel or Jerusalem, wherever, to Nineveh is about 500 miles. If he had walked it, amen, 15, 20 miles a day, it would take him over a month to get there. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but when God is behind you and put wind behind you, you make the journey 
a three day journey in a day. Amen. See, he carried him for uh, close, and he got in a hurry after that, and the Holy Ghost got a hold of him, and he made the journey real quick. But he was angry. He was still angry. He prophesied to the city. Yeah. God getting ready to destroy y'all for the wickedness up in this house. Amen. In this city. He getting ready to destroy you. And the people listened to him. Those wicked people listened to him. Heard what he had to say. And they repented. They told the king what this man said. And the king repented. And calls for a fast, hallelujah, that perhaps God would deliver us. And what did Jonah do? Jonah went on top of the hill to see what God was going to do. And when he didn't see the city get destroyed, he got mad. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's just like some of us. <laughs> we, we see... <laughs> We thinking that, that your enemy is going to be wiped off the face of the earth, but here they come, blessing God. You leave the church because so-and-so got delivered. <laughs> He's a child. They are a child of God. They need to be delivered. You ought to be rejoicing, praising God. Hallelujah. When your enemy get delivered, because when your enemy is delivered, he's no longer your enemy. But he's your brother. He, she, she's your sister in the Lord. Holly, and see, that comes from obeying God. You got to obey God. God got it already worked out. He just needs somebody to institute it in the earth. And that's us. It falls on us. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Amen. Praise be unto God. Look at, look at him now. Look at him. Look, he's all messed up. He's all messed up. He's he, he, he don't know what to do. He want to die. I would that you just kill me right here. <laughs> I done prophesied doom on them people and you didn't, didn't kill them. <laughs> oh, I can see his lips stuck way out. Mad at God <laughs> for not killing his enemies. God began to talk to him. God got to talk all that out of him. All that mess in us that we have when we come to God needs to be put out of us. Yeah. Are you hearing me? We have to go through some things sometime uh, just so God could work stuff out of us yeah. so that he could get more of him in us. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Because it's hindering your move. It's hindering your blessings. It's holding you up. And the devil knows it's holding you up. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he he builds him a little a makeshift home, I'm going to call it, a little tent-like thing. Sits there to get the sun off of him. So God grows up a gourd in one day. And the leaves over, leaned over on Jonah and gave him shade. Yeah. Oh, he loved that thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, one day it grew up. The next day, God caused the worm to eat it, and it died. Now he's really angry. <laughs> God says to him, listen, you didn't cause this gourd to grow. It grew in one day. And, and in one day, it died. You have more compassion for the gourd do you do for the Ninevites? That great city where there are six score thousands of people in it and much cattle. And you want me to wipe them out just like that? Stop praying God wipe your enemies out. We're not in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament. Pray for your enemy. Do good unto them that despitefully use you. Amen. That's what God wants us to obey. If you see him, a brother and, and he's take, overtaken in a fault, don't slam him down, but raise him up. Come on, somebody. Recover that brother. Recover that sister. In the spirit of humility. 
That's what God wants. So Jonah is just, just mad. A prophet of God who ought to know better. But he was, his prejudices caused him to get angry. I would say get angry, but said not. Not obeying God. God said, don't you, you, why would you have more compassion on something that grew up in a day and died the next day? The people who are living, breathing, being, people made in my image and after my likeness. Yeah, they're wicked. Listen, God know you got some wicked people around you. God know you got some wicked children, some wicked husbands and wives, and, uh, even some wicked preachers among us. But listen, you don't hate them. If God send you with a word to them, go give the word. See, see, our job is not what happens after the word is given. Our job is to give the word. And it's up to them to do something with the word. If they don't repent, the word will take effect in their lives. Because God is, is, is tired of it. He's, he's fed up with it. Come on, son. And he's trying to give them one more chance to get it right. There may, you may be the last chance to tell that person that if they don't get it right, God is going to destroy them. But God is a God of love. He don't want to destroy them. He says it's his desire that no one perish, but that all come to repentance. But we as Christians got to do what we have to do. We got to tell the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Tell them when they don't want to hear it. Tell them if they want to hear it. Come on, somebody. How, how do you know you may save a soul that day by obeying God? You can't run from his presence. He's everywhere. And I don't know. I know God can. If he did it once, he'll do it again. He can do it again. But uh, I, I'm not going to run from his presence because I know better. Where can I go? I can't go anywhere. Uh, hallelujah. And get away from God. That's what I like about God. See, people who try that don't know God. If you really know God. You are not going to try to flee from his presence. Amen. Once you come to know that he's the omnipresent God, he's everywhere at the same time. He fills his universe. Huh? The Bible in Habakkuk says that the spirit of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. That means he's completely covered. So I can't go anywhere and escape him. Oh, we, well, we're going up to the moon and, 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 and we're going to habitate on the moon. Yeah, he's there too. We're going we're gonna to colonize Mars. Now, we got the ability to do that. You know, I want to be one of the old, those that go up, not me. Hallelujah. I want to be one of those that go to colonize Mars. He's right there. The omnipresent God. Not only is he omnipresent, but he's omniscient. <laughs> he knows everything. So how are you going to contend with his knowledge? His thoughts are way above ours. His ways are way above ours. I'm not going to contend with the God who knows everything. You know, there are people down here on the earth think they know everything. And they're always talking. The more they talk, the more you realize they don't know anything. Huh? Trying to impress somebody. Our God knows everything. We serve a God who knows it all. And he gives us a little knowledge to help us along the journey. Amen, somebody. It, was, it wasn't the, the little black young lady that, that discovered how to, to create the vaccines for, for COVID. It was God who downloaded into her that she would discover the key, come on, to unlock this, this mystery about the COVID-19. He could have given, given it to anybody. So don't get high and mighty because you got that. <laughs> if God hadn't given it to you, you wouldn't have it. Come on. We want to obey a God who knows everything. Why? Because when I get in trouble, I can say, God, I don't know what's happening. 
But I know you know what's happening. And because you know what's happening, then God tell me what I need to know. I don't need to know everything. I just need to know about this situation. Tell me, God, uh, which way I'm supposed to move. Do I go right or left or do I stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? Tell me, God, where you want me to be. Who you want me to talk to. Ah, Who you want me to marry. Come on. You know everything, God. Am I spinning my wheels here, Lord of glory? Uh, uh, Lord, uh, do you have a blessing I haven't received yet? And you want me to wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord and be of good courage. Uh, Lord, I'm trying to obey you, but sometimes it gets hard, Father. I need some relief. Woo, here comes relief. Glory to God. I want to serve a God and obey a God. Who knows my end from the beginning. That's the God I serve. That's the God we serve. Amen. He's, no, he's not slack. Bible says he need, neither slumbers nor sleep. In other words, he don't nod out on you. Just when you need him most. No, the older I get, the more I nod. Huh? Uh, some of y'all that way too. <laughs> Sit down to watch TV and the TV watching you. You done nod it out. God don't slumber. We need sleep. He don't need sleep. He's a spirit. Praise be unto God. Spirit don't need to sleep. <laughs> He's always working. Jesus declared, My father's always working. So uh, what I see him do, I do. When God tell you to do something, you do it. That's work for you to do. He's not going to do everything. Amen. No, we're labels and co labels together with him. So don't be like Jonah, run off and get mad after you've done what God told you to do. Amen. I, I tried to get out of a situation because I, I agonized over it for three days. I guess that was the well I was in. <laughs> but I had a message for a preacher, a renowned preacher in the area. And I had to go tell him what thus say the Lord. For three days I prayed about it and agonized over it. And God wasn't talking. So, Sister Rim, I know I had to go do what God showed me. And I went, I met with him at his church, and I told him what I saw in a dream, and this man said, I receive it. It's like a burden lifted out of me. Obeying God. Hallelujah. That's just before God blessed us. Sometimes in obeying God, there's a blessing coming. And if you don't obey, you miss your blessing. Hallelujah. Perhaps God had a blessing for Jonah, but Jonah was too stubborn to receive because he had some prejudice in him. Whatever's in you that's not of God, say, God, show me and let me get it out. It purge me with hyssop. Make me clean through and through. I don't want anything hindering me from getting to you, Lord. Hallelujah. The devil's setting traps all the time. Uh, sometimes we think we're justified uh, in hating folk. Sometimes we think we're justified in trying to get even with what they did to us. Uh, uh, so we hate them for 20, 30, 40 years and sit up in the church with prejudice in our body, in our spirits. Uh, and God can't bless you because you won't get rid of it. Oh, my God, my God. The Bible says that you are to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily, easily beset you. You lay it aside. 
That's why you want God to show it to you. Shine a light on me. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. Woo! I need it to come out of me. I don't need that in me. It's hindering my blessings. It's hindering my confession. I'm confessing how good God is. I'm confessing I'm a Christian, but I got a, a grudge in my heart. So I'm saying it's the little foxes, it's the little foxes. Just, 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 just tearing up the vine where you can't produce any fruit. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So obeying God means obeying him fully. Not your little picks that you won't obey in. I'll obey him in this, but, you know, I think I can have this over here. That's the way Satan entices you out of the body of Christ. With a little something. A little something, something. Yeah, he, he been playing in your mind about it. Are you hearing me? It's been crossing your mind. Maybe every day you think about that. Then he finally gives you the opportunity to say yay or nay. He'll present it to you on a platter. Yay or nay. I know you've been thinking about it because I've been talking to you about it. And you've been meditating on it. Now here it is. This is your opportunity. And you have to have enough God in you to say, Lord, I repent for even thinking about what Satan brought to me. Yes. And the next time he bring that thought to you, you say, hey, casting it down. Every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the word and the knowledge of God, I cast it down. Yes. Jonah didn't do that. Jonah kept it in his mind. I hate them Ninevites. I hate the Assyrians. And you telling me to go and declare doom unto them, and then you're going to, I know you're going to repent of the evil. David knew him so well when, when God presented David with three choices. Because of your, you counting the people and depending on the people instead of me. And churches are like that today. They're depending on the people. If they don't have enough people, they won't move. And God is telling them to move, but they won't move because they're looking at the people. Wait till I get 300, then I'll move. See? Yeah. So that's why it was so easy for folk to say, he ain't got enough people. I have enough God. <laughs> I'm not depending on people because people let you down. People say they're with you today and they're gone tomorrow. I'm going to obey God because he already got it worked out. You just don't see how he worked it out until it works out. That means faith. So he knew God. God will repent. David said that. David said, Lord, I, I hear your choices. You gave me three. I take that one. I take them, them three days with you. <laughs> I, I put myself in your hand, God. Wait, the God who can destroy you like that. I, yeah, I put myself in your hand because I, I don't want to put myself in the hands of my enemy. They, they, they won't have any mercy, but I know God will have mercy. <laughs> See, when you know God, you know he'll have mercy. All you have to do is call on him. God sent his angel and it wiped out 70,000. David got on his face before God. said, God, have mercy on people. They didn't sin. I sinned. Have mercy. And God told the angel that is enough. Hold your hand. He knew about the mercies of God. I'm glad for the mercies of God. He had mercy on me. He had mercy on you. 
He had mercy on the Ninevites. He didn't have mercy on Sodom and Gomorrah because they didn't repent. Preacher told me this. He said, you don't go to hell for sinning. You go to hell for not repenting of the sin. Nineveh repented of the sin and was spared. Sodom and Gomorrah, they kept on doing what they were doing till the fire fell. Obey God. It has a recompense of reward. Hallelujah. Oh, that boy don't know what he's doing. Yes, I do. I know God. And when you obey him, he'll do the miraculous for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. If you're trying to do it in your own strength, he'll let you. Yep. <laughs> but I heard the word say, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. That don't mean you don't do anything. You do what you, you, you can do. God will do the rest. But I'm just resting in God. I, I, I want God to take the reins. I want him to take control. Come on, somebody. That, that's why that shift my daughter was talking about is coming. We're getting ready to shift into another area of ministry. Uh, we, didn't, we don't really, we, we had an idea, but we really don't know it. Until it comes. Oh, why? Because I know God. God will tell you, get ready to do something, then he'll supersede it. Amen. He'll do super abundantly above it. Just to blow your mind. Hallelujah. Is that right? So obey God even when it hurts to obey God. Even when they talk about you, obey God. Even when church folk talk about you, obey God. Just keep on obeying God till God shows up, hallelujah, with his outstretched hand uh, and bless you. Uh, the Bible said perhaps he'll leave a blessing behind. Hey, glory to God. God wants to bless and he wants to bless mightily. So he's saying to you, hold on, baby. Uh, just a little while longer, I'm coming to your rescue. I'm gathering your blessings. That's what I'm doing. I'm gathering. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm gathering your blessings. So when I show up, I don't have to go back and get anything. I have it all in the palm of my hand. Woo, glory to God. Just obey God. Hey, if mama don't want to obey God, you obey God. If daddy don't want to obey God, you obey God. If your children don't want to obey God, you obey God. Keep obeying God. Hallelujah. Oh, that's why Jesus had to obey God. He didn't want to. Yeah, he got in the garden and he was in agony. And he said, Lord, if there's any way possible, any other way, just, just Lord, let this cup pass from me. Hey, but he realized that this was the way. Hallelujah. So he said, nevertheless, not my will, oh, but thy will be done. And when it was settled in his spirit, uh, he said, hey, now I'm ready to get up out of here. Glory to God. He left the garden, got his disciples, and here come the devil working out God's plan. God will use the devil to work out his plans in your life. When you obey him, the devil thought he was winning. But because you obeyed, the devil lost. The devil lost. Say the devil got to lose. Uh, the devil's got to lose. Look at, look at him. Look at him. Uh, yeah, yeah. They mocked him. They beat him. They judged him. They crucified him. Pissed him in his side. Oh, my God, my God. Somebody said it was untold agony. We don't know the pain and the suffering uh, that he went through. Glory to God. But he was obeying God. Uh, I heard him say, God, into your hand I commend my spirit. In other words, whatever I put in your hand, Father, I know you're able to keep it. I'm not worried about losing my spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. Then they say he hung his head and he died. When they came to check on him, he was already dead. He said, no man take my life, but I give it up willingly. And if I had the power to give it up, 
I got power to take it up again. So I'm not worried about my life. I'm not fearing any man. Come on, somebody. The Bible declared that he went into hell. They thought they had him down there. Uh, one theologian said in his mind that, hey, they were partying in hell. We got the Son of God right here in hell. Oh, look at Satan gloating over it. Huh? I have defeated God. But oh, somebody said early Sunday morning, there was a stirring, there was a shaking. Ah, I believe somebody reported to Satan, uh, you better come here because something's happening. What you mean something happening? Don't we have him? We thought we had him. But he's shaking. He's wakening. Hallelujah. And now he's up. Hey, 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 hey. And he began to strip Satan with all his power. Uh, had the power, death, hell, and the grave. Uh, then he came up out the grave. Now, God, my God, do you see him getting up? Came up through his grave clothes, picked up his body. Now, God, my God, stood on resurrection ground and said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Then he gave us power, told us to go, told us to obey, told us to do his will. Wherever I send you, go. What I tell you to say, say. And don't fear any man. I don't care if he got power of life and death over you. You don't fear any man. Because except the Father give him that power, he has no power. That's what Jesus told Pilate. You don't have any power. You think you got power. If my father didn't give it to you, you wouldn't have it. So when we obey God, God blesses us. And the obedience ought not to be for a blessing. The obedience ought to come out of a grateful heart that he saved you. And that he loves you. I don't serve him for what he does. We serve him for who he is. He's a holy God. And he tells us to be holy. For the Lord your God is a holy God. Holiness without no man can see God. Are you hearing me? Holiness without, no man can see God. So he's calling us to holiness. He's not calling us to the church to be a member of the church. He's calling us to righteousness. And when you are righteous, you want to be a member of a church. Sometimes we slip up, mess up. Guess what? He's still there. Say, come on, come on, come on back home. Come on, let's get it right. I don't fault you for sinning. I fault you for staying in sin. I'm talking about messing up after you got saved. Some people, you know, they didn't mess up after they got saved. So they look down their nose on folk. Don't look down on a man unless you're picking him up. The Williams brothers sang that. I think it was them. They're so long now. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. If you're here and you need Jesus, you need Jesus. That's all you do. I offer him to you. All you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me. Learn of me. 
for I'm meek and lowly of heart. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. Don't carry the burden of Satan. Don't carry the burden of sin. When sin has been done away with, the power of sin has been broken. Amen. There were times before Jesus died when sin had not been broken, but sin's power has been broken. But we got to declare, declare that in our lives and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then sin will be broken over your life. Amen. Is there one today? You in a backslidden state, you need to come.